it's, it's rather difficult to get our heads around the uh, incredible quantities of energy that people consume nowadays and how fast the situation has arrived. Anybody uh, under 50 will have no idea from their direct experience how recent this state of affairs is. Of course, for most of human history, energy wasn't even an issue. We were hunter-gatherers and we only needed a fire to cook and warm ourselves at night. But um, for the last 10,000 years, this is the period with which we can probably compare ourselves, um, our energy economy was nearly all human muscle with a bit of assistance from domestic animals. Now, it's like this, and that's happened really in the blink of an eye. Extraordinary change. How did it happen? Well, um, things like coal have been around quite a long time, but um, the quantities used for most of the industrial era have been very modest. Now, um, imagine yourself sitting in the grandstand of a football field, and imagine a big machine uh, tips a heap of coal so it covers the whole field. That's about 45 metres high. Well, that amount of coal lasts the world eight minutes or so. It releases a million tonnes of CO2 when, when it's burned. If you stacked up all the oil drums to last eight minutes on the football field, it would look like that. It's, a, it's as high as a five-storey building. If you wanted to put all the oil for a year into a tank, it'd be 1.7 kilometres on each side, a cubic-sized tank. There's the football field for comparison. And all the coal for a year would make a mountain 1,400 metres high and 15 kilometres around the base. Uh, the, the quantities of gas we burn are, are virtually uh, unimaginable, 3.3 trillion cubic meters last year. A tank for that, if it, if you could keep it all at atmospheric pressure, would be about 15 kilometers on a side. Uh, this chart's from Alfred Crosby's book, and it, it shows very well how very recent and uh, novel our pattern of energy consumption really is. You can see that even though the industrial era began early in the 19th century, it didn't make a very big impact on the fossil fuel economy until the end of that century, and then the age of oil really didn't get going until the second half of the 20th century. And then something quite new happened, and the pattern of energy consumption hasn't been the same since. The relation between energy and wealth even though it's complicated, is in, in a way very straightforward. Uh, there's no possible way that we could be as prosperous and um, comfortable as we are now without uh, the fossil fuels. Here's a, a relation between CO2 emissions, which is a proxy for fossil fuel consumption and uh, GDP. And you can see that uh, there's an interesting hitch in the trend here. So from uh, the post-war era until the 70s, um, our consumption trend of fossil fuel was very steep indeed. Uh, and almost certainly that couldn't have continued much longer. As it was, the cost of oil went up about nine times in real terms in a decade then, and um, that started a permanent change in the trend. Nevertheless, our energy appetite, as you can see, is still very healthy. Um, this might help you get a, a bit of a handle on the size of human impact on the whole um, ecosystem of uh, Earth's surface. This is uh, composed by a man called Paul McCready, who uh, used to give talks and wondered a lot about how he could make this uh, extraordinary fact vivid for his audiences, and he he's, he asked people to think of all the vertebrate biomass that lives on land, that's uh, reptiles and mammals and birds, everything with a backbone, but not um, insects and worms and stuff. 
And he said that um, before the 10,000 years ago, when we began to live together in towns and villages and grow our crops, that um, the human contribution to that biomass can not have been greater than 0.1%, one part in a thousand. Now, it's about 97%, including our livestock and pets. There's 1.3 billion cows. They're quite a, a large mammal. There's about a billion pigs. There's a bit less than a billion sheep. There's uh, nearly a billion goats, 400 million horses. There's 7 billion of us, 97%. Even more extraordinary, MacReady discovered, is that n most of this change has happened in less than one lifetime. There, there's my lifetime represented um, up until the present time between those two red lines, and you can see that uh, the biggest part of that change has occurred um, while I've been around. So it's not surprising that uh, folks under 50 uh, think that our um, extraordinary energy bonanza is actually normal when it's nothing of the kind.